Okay, the angle of the shoulder turn. I think this is a, a topic that isn't talked about enough and is extremely, extremely important. And I've only talked about half of it so far. I've talked about on the way back, you want a shoulder turn that's 90 degrees to the spine. And I've said that, you know, I've also mentioned that you want the turn through being 90 degrees to the spine. Well, what I haven't talked about is the mistake that most people make. Even a lot of PGA Tour players make this mistake, but they have lots and lots of talent. They practice for four, five, six hours a day so they can make up for some of these issues. And what I mean by, imp this is the most common mistake that I see. The most common mistake that I see is too flat going back and too vertical coming through, okay? People say, well, you know, if you're coming over the top, it's gonna be too flat coming through. But it's not the shoulder turn that creates the over the top, it's the hand movement. So it's too far inside, over the top, and then the shoulders work vertically and there's your pull slice. Um, Dustin Johnson, I slowed down his swing and I, you know, I would never change how, much, how gifted and how talented he is, but if you watch his shoulder turn, it's very good going back, but then he's, because he dives and has that shut club face, if he would have turned level, he would hit snap hooks, pull hooks all day long because he's got a shut club face with that bowed left wrist. So what he does is, is he turns very vertically into impact and then right after impact, he wrenches those shoulders around really flat. And um, that's really, really hard on his body. And I theorize that that might have been where he might have gone wrong that last day at the US Open when the pressure got the best of him. Just a theory on my part. But anyway, I used him to illustrate how you can compensate for a bad angled shoulder turn, but if you make the shoulder turn 90 degrees to the spine all the way through or close to it, that's really going to make things a lot easier on you. And like I said, the most common mistake is people go too flat, too level to the ground going back and then have to reroute over the top even a little bit, okay? But even people that make a good backswing or a decent backswing or even a little outside, or a little too vertical going back, this, the helping, whenever you top a shot, blade a chip, it's usually because that shoulder turn is too vertical, trying to help the ball in the air. So, for most people, for most people, and you just want to check this in the mirror, a shoulder turn that is 90 degrees to the spine going back is going to feel very vertical because most people want to swing this way and a 90 degree shoulder turn to the spine coming through is actually going to feel very flat so it's going to feel like this and like that and that helps when you turn your shoulders flatter coming through the ball but not flatter than 90 degrees you want that 90 degree shoulder turn but when your shoulders turn flatter through the ball, it helps your hips clear, and it helps your hand stay out in front of you, okay? And that helps the club stay on plane through impact. So, a lot of techno babble, a lot of explanations for people that like to hear the technical aspect, but to simplify it down, 90 degree shoulder turn to the spine going back, 90 degree shoulder turn to the spine coming through, and for most people, it's going to feel more vertical going back and more flat coming through because the mistakes that are often made is the opposite. Too flat going back, too vertical coming through. So again, you don't have to pay attention to all the technical aspects of this video. It's just an explanation of the mistakes, general mistakes that people make and how turning 90 degrees to the spine just will make it a lot easier both going back and going through just like the plane and release by feel video if 
your shoulders are always turning on the same 90 degree level to your spine, it's real easy to keep the club in one place, on plane, and then just add some hip flex and some knee flex to the plane and release by feel. And you've got yourself a golf swing that's, you know, manageable.